Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well today. So in today's video, I am going to be making a couple of beginner friendly fall sewing projects. These are both accessories and they would make good beginner projects. One is super easy for brand new beginners. The other one is a little bit more complex, but definitely something that you can manage. So let me show you guys what the projects are. So first up, we have this blanket style scarf, which I made out of this plaid flannel. It's really, really soft and cozy. And I like this simple window pane plaid. So this would be a really great first sewing project if you are brand new to sewing, because there are really only two seams that we're sewing here. And then also this fringed edge here. So this is a great one. If you are a little bit um, intimidated by sewing, it would be a really good one to practice with. And then the other one that is a little bit more complicated is this corduroy bucket hat, which I love so much. I love this pink corduroy fabric and I do have a free pattern for this linked on my website down below. So if you decide you want to make your own bucket hat, I have made a pattern for you guys. So make sure to check the description box to find your template over on my website. But this one is a little bit more complicated, but definitely something you can manage. And it's a really rewarding project as well. I think it's so fun to make something different like a hat. So let's go ahead and jump in and get sewing. So let's start out with the blanket scarf. I'm using two yards of this flannel fabric that I got from Joann's. You could use just one yard and then cut the piece in half and use the two pieces and sew them together down the middle. But I went with two yards to get the full length that I wanted without having to put a seam in it. And then I decided to cut this in half. So my width is a little bit over 22 inches, meaning I can make two scarves out of these two yards of fabric. Next, all I'm going to do is fray the ends. So I'm pulling some of the horizontal thread out of the fabric to create this nice little fringed effect at the edge. And I'm just going to keep doing this until the fringed edge is as long as I want it to be. And if your fringe ends up a little uneven as mine is looking here, you can just use your scissors and trim it to make it a little bit more evened out. So once the ends are frayed, the only thing left to do is to hem the sides. So to do this, I'm going to fold up the side about a half an inch, and then I will fold it over on itself another half an inch to encase that raw edge so that you don't see any of that raw edge once the scarf is done. Then all I'll do is top stitch all the way down the side and do the same thing on the opposite side. This is the only actual sewing that you do in this whole entire project. So it's a great opportunity to practice just sewing in a straight line. If you are newer to sewing and getting comfortable with your machine, you'll just have these two long seams to stitch down. So after I finished stitching the hem, I just gave everything a final press and this scarf was all done. This is such a simple project and I really hope some of you guys will try this out. It also makes a great gift if you're looking ahead to do some DIY gifts for this holiday season. You get a bunch of different fun plaid fabrics and it would be a really great gift idea. Moving on now to the bucket hat, you'll need a couple of different things for this. First up, a half a yard of fabric. I'm using this corduroy, which is so, so cute. You'll also want some fusible interfacing. This will help the hat to really hold its shape a little better, especially if you're using a softer fabric. And then you'll also want the PDF pattern that you can find over on my website. Now, when you're printing the pattern out, check to make sure that it's scaled to 100% and print out the test page first. Measure it to make sure that it measures the listed measurements, and that way you know your pattern is the right size. So I'm just going to pin down my pattern pieces and cut them out. You'll want two of the crown piece, four of the brim piece, and one of the top piece. You'll notice that my crown piece looks a little bit smaller here than the actual piece if you print it out. That's because I changed the design to make it just a little bit wider after I sewed this hat, but the one that you see in the clips of me wearing it is the one with the adjusted pattern piece. One more note just about the pattern pieces, the crown pieces, and also the brim pieces are all cut on the fold of the fabric. That means that you're cutting it through two layers of fabric at once. So when you open them out, you have one big piece instead of two small pieces. 
So with everything cut out, we can start assembling the hat. And the first thing I'm going to do is apply the fusible interfacing to the crown and top pieces of the hat. That will just allow it to really hold its shape. But since the brim has multiple layers, we don't need as much of that there. I'm also threading up my machine and matching thread because I'm going to be stitching on the top of the fabric quite a lot here. So the first step of the sewing process is to sew the sides of the crown together. So place your two pieces with the right sides together and stitch down the sides with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm also using my serger here just to finish off the edges, but if you don't have a serger, you could either use a zigzag stitch or pinking shears just to make sure it doesn't fray. After pressing those seams flat, we're moving on to attaching the top of the hat to the crown. And this part is a little bit tricky, so be really slow and careful as you do this and be really patient with yourself as you're trying to sew it down because it can be difficult to keep everything nice and even, but just match the right sides together and pin the crown of the hat all the way around the top as best you can without getting any puckers and stitch this down with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. I find that I really have to take my time and adjust as I go around the circle to make sure I'm not catching any excess fabric here or making anything pucker or anything like that. If you do end up with little puckers in your fabric and it's not the end of the world by any means and you can kind of disguise it when you iron this down. So don't worry about it too much. It will get a lot easier with practice. Then I'm just going to serge the seam off to finish off the edge. Again, you could use a zigzag or whatever you have on hand and then I can turn this to the right side and the hat is starting to take shape, which is exciting. And then we're just going to add two rows of top stitching to the top of the hat on either side of where we just sewed that seam. Top stitching just means you're going to sew on the surface of the fabric and this helps to give it a little bit more of a professional look. So now we can move on to making the brim of the hat. So first things first, we'll sew the side seams. So match these up in pairs with the right sides together and then sew the side seams with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Then you can just press these seams open. We don't need to finish them off because they are not going to show on the inside of the hat. So at this point, you should have two circles or loops of fabric, and we are going to put those two loops together. So match them up with the right sides together and match them at the side seams, and then pin all the way around and sew all the way around this using a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I did want to mention as well that you could also adjust the length of the brim here by taking a larger seam allowance or trimming it off a little bit just to make it smaller if that was something that you wanted to adjust. So now I'm just going to turn everything to the right side and press this down and then we are going to do a lot of rows of top stitching on this brim starting with one row that will be a half an inch seam allowance from the edge and then I'm going to do several rows that are a quarter of an inch spaced from each other. And then I will just stitch all the way around until I feel like it's looking really, really good. I wanna leave enough room though to sew my brim to the top of my hat with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So you could do as much or little top stitching as you like. Here are what the two halves of the hat look like at this stage, and now we can go ahead and put them together. So I'm just going to match up the side seams of the brim with the side seams of the top and pin all the way around the circle here. Then I'll just sew this down with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and also serge the edge. I did decide to do one more row of top stitching just right where we sewed the brim to the top of the hat. I think it just gives it a nice finishing touch here. Mm -hmm. 
after I finished top stitching, this hat was all done. This was such a fun project for me. I've never made a hat before, but I did have a blue bucket hat when I was 12. That was one of my favorite things. So it's kind of nostalgic for me, but I hope some of you guys will try it out as well. All right, guys, that is going to be it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed seeing these two projects. I really enjoyed making them. I especially had fun doing the bucket hat. I had to make about four of them before I got the pattern exactly how I wanted. So I've made quite a few by now. And once you get into kind of a routine and rhythm of it, you can make them really quickly. So if you decide to try it as well, um, you might find that they come together really quickly after a while. So definitely let me know, guys, if you make either of these projects, tag me over on Instagram. I will put my username here. I would love to see what you make. It just makes my day when I get to see your projects. So definitely let me know if you do try these out. And thank you so much for watching and hanging out on my channel today. If you're new around here and you haven't subscribed yet, I would love for you to go ahead and do that now by clicking the red button down below. But other than that, I'm going to leave it here. Thank you guys so much for watching today and I will talk to you in my next one. Bye. I'm done living life with the lights out. Down.